<laughs> I think it's almost like um, his Franklins are teasing him. You can see that lip every now and again. It's almost like he's growling at them, sort of saying that, uh, "Come on, guys, I'm ignoring you. Stop making noise around me. I can easily." swipe you with my paws if you ignore me or annoy me enough sorry attention to them. Oh, sorry the car we're standing in quite a bit of an incline here. That's why the car moves a little bit. But look at that. It's almost like he's thinking about it. He's thinking, oh well, maybe I should try. I ate a few of these when I was young. But the energy it would take might just be too much. Charles. So Charles, I didn't quite understand you calling me for. Oh, okay, cool, Charles. Charles, just to make sure you guys got the update, but one ingwe here before Sukh Dam, just Lala Panji in the, in the Shlatina. Uh, Looks like Beacon Mail. Seems he might get uh, a bit sleepy again. As soon as they start blinking slowly, I mean, you know the feeling, we do the same. When you blink and you close. Look at those long whiskers, well, very beautiful leopard this. Like I said, he's still got one or two years to grow, he's not a fully big bulky mature male yet but um, beautiful cat he's got nice color he's got a bit of red on his skin a bit of a slightly redder tone than some very pretty also looking at those long whiskers very long whiskers you can see those white whiskers just sticking out the side of his face various reasons for it ah look at those eyes uh, the whiskers essentially <laughs> it's gonna get even more comfortable essentially um, a few different uses for them but uh, the one is just when they're moving around at night and they're walking through bush and brush they can feel things when they're walking around it's obviously about the same width as the body but then another very important uh, role that the whiskers play as well is when they catch something and they grab it by the throat like most predators do lions do the same cheetahs do the same but off the air supply and eventually the animal will, will suffocate and those whiskers touching the skin of the animal can feel the heartbeat so they know exactly when the animal is actually dead so that they can then release the grip so that's another very important role that the whiskers play Very eerie out here this afternoon. It's almost dark. It's even a little bit darker than you can see from looking at this leopard. 
when I look up there with the naked eye, it's very hard to make the leopard out actually. Cool, Andrew, copy. Yeah, keep coming in for. Um, we're here by the north eastern side by those two dead and seniors and the English Nalala Panzi on the northern bank, a little bit in the Shlatin. Um I don't know, maybe even if you want to go around to the northern side of the Marty, it might be easier to see. <laughs> Flies bugging him a bit. Very pretty leopard this though. Also the lines of his face. Now again, especially with male leopard as they mature, the females not so much. The females tend to, to look similar as they get older. They don't change physically that much. Obviously they get a bit bigger. But male leopards get a lot chunkier. And then also as they get older, when they get here to about sort of it's about six years, seven years old, they um, they start getting these very square, heavy heads quite often a, quite a bit of a dewlap which which just uh, beacon males already got but he's still got quite pretty features two three years from now he'll start getting a much heavier sort of more uh, more serious head almost if that makes any sense Thank you, Sue. That's just while we waiting for this leopard to hopefully get a bit more active. Um, question there. Wendy's asking how do leopard and lion get along? If they're rivals or if they pretty much just leave each other alone. Um, Wendy, they, they're rivals in the, in, the, in the sense that they go for similar food species. So uh, leopard and lion both hunt, for instance, in parlor. But um, in terms of the niches, it's separate enough that it's not a, a direct competition. Um, by definition, only one species can actually survive within a certain niche. So the niches are quite different in terms of leopards specialize more in a sort of medium-sized prey, impala, daker, warthog, uh, and they'll also eat other things. They'll supplement their diet even with things like insects or birds, um, whereas lions uh, go for the smaller prey as well, impala, warthog, but they also specialize in, in your large prey, buffalo and giraffe and so on. So there is some rivalry, but it's not a direct rivalry. It's a little bit like sort of, um, you know, saying that two companies are, are both business companies, but one deals in, in uh, computer software and the other one deals in food stuff. It's, it's, they're both businesses, but they, uh, they've got quite different niches. So that makes <laughs> some sense, maybe. Um, in terms of killing each other or fighting with each other, leopard do try and avoid lions. Uh, lions will kill leopard when they have the opportunity just because it is potential um, competition. Then if you maybe joined us the other day, Wendy, we had an awesome morning drive. Uh, I guess maybe not you from, from Brooklyn. Um, so our morning drive is a bit of a funny time. But we had a group of lions, those five Mapojo males, just lying around. And then um, suddenly, unexpectedly, like when we found this leopard, Karula, a female leopard, jumped out of a tree nearby. Well, I'm telling you that story. That just shows you that there's no rivalry. The lions didn't go and sleep under the tree and wait for it to come down so they could do something. It was more just a case of, obviously, when they were walking through, she spotted them and got out their way. So typically, they're trying to beat each other. Hello? 